In the 19th century, a group of archaeologists from Europe headed to the Middle East in search of ancient cities mentioned in the Bible as Babylon and Nineveh. Instead, however, they came across artifacts revealing to them an even more ancient civilization that until then no one had thought existed. The Sumerian civilization, occupying the region of southern Mesopotamia between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, was one of the first ancient civilizations. Although there is no indisputable and accurate information about the origin, archaeologists still date the formation of this ancient civilization around 4000 BC. In this video, we will introduce you to the ancient history of Sumer. We will take a look at the area scientists call the Cradle of Life and find out why this ancient civilization is considered fundamental to our modern world. The name Sumer was given to the ancient inhabitants inhabiting the territory south of Mesopotamia by their successors, the Akkadians. The Sumerians called their land Kingur, which translates as land of noble lords, and themselves black-headed people. There are various theories about the origin of the Sumerians. What is known from historical and archaeological evidence is that the people were not Semitic and their language was not related to any other known languages. Some historians believe that they were a West Asian people. According to another not-so-popular theory, the Sumerians were a North African people who migrated to the Middle East. Some historians believe that they arrived in the Lower Mesopotamia region as invaders in the Obiad period or after. Other studies indicate that the various communities that inhabited the territory of Mesopotamia merged and formed the Sumerian people. One of these hypotheses indicates that the Sumerians were good navigators, based on the fact that their first settlements appeared in the deltas of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. Despite the obscurity and various theories about the origin of the Sumerian people, researchers define the developing ancient civilization as the foundation of our modern world. In his work, History Begins in Sumer, scholar Samuel Noah Kramer lists 39 inventions originating from the ancient Sumerian civilization. Some of them are the first schools, the first cosmogony and cosmology of man, the first moral ideals, the first job, the first fables, the first library catalog, the first love song, etc. In fact, Sumer was not a single state uniting different cities, but a collection of city-states that were independent of each other. Each of them has its own government, and often fought among themselves. However, they were united by a common language, religion, and culture. The largest ones are Eridu, Nippur, Kish, Lagash, Uruk, and Ur. An important center for any city is the temple dedicated to the local god. Each city-state had its own god, patron, and guardian of the city, and a ruler who was the deputy and priest of the city's god. Archaeological studies indicate that the houses in the cities were grouped around a center in which a large architectural complex was built. It contains workshops, storehouses, scribes' quarters, and in the very center, on a raised platform, is the shrine and temple of the local god. From this, we can conclude that it was a temple that had an extremely important role in the cities, and according to written sources, it was the temple that was the center of the spiritual and physical life of the Sumerians. These platforms and temple complexes are called ziggurats and reach considerable dimensions. Scientists compare them with the Egyptian pyramids. The earliest ziggurat discovered by researchers is dated to a little before 3000 BC and is located on the territory of the city of Uruk. It is 40 feet high, and stairs and ramps lead up to the sanctuary called the White Temple. The ziggurat as a complex and a temple is built so the worshiper has to start at the foot of the stairs in the eastern part, up, climbing, and passing as if through an angular spiral to reach the main room of the temple. It is called a cella, and sacrifices were made there. In the following centuries, the temple complexes were perfected and reached even larger dimensions, rising on several levels. The priest king built the ziggurats. In the city of Ur, the ziggurat was built by King Ernamu around 2100 BC. It has three levels and is dedicated to the moon god Nana. In their structure, these complexes resemble a mountain peak. According to the Sumerians, the mountain was the place where the gods lived, and by building ziggurats, they believed that they were creating the most suitable home for their god. According to written records, 
The Sumerians believed that the first city in the world was Eridu, and the god of wisdom and water, called Enki, was its patron. According to legend, the god Enki created the city of Eridu by raising it from the watery marshes and created the idea of order and kingship on earth. The local god of each city was supposed to represent them to the other gods. This is what the Sumerians believed. The gods controlled the weather, water, fertility, and celestial bodies. The territory of the city and what was in it were the possession of the god. For his part, he took care of providing labor, collecting, and distributing the harvest. The inhabitants of the city were at the disposal of their god, learning about his orders from the king priest. Thus, religion was completely bound and an important part of people's lives. Sumerian culture developed at a rapid pace, and civilization reached its climax with the advent of writing. This is defined as a great leap in the cultural development of human history. Originally, writing was pictographic, pictorial, and developed as a necessity in trade communication. Subsequently, it underwent its development by acquiring a more schematic appearance and composed of horizontal, vertical, and diagonal wedges. This cuneiform system reached its peak with the creation of increasingly complex literary works, poetic epics, prayers, and laws. During archaeological excavations, thousands of clay tablets with inscriptions were found. Among the surviving texts in the Sumerian language, scholars distinguished those concerning the administration of cities, laws, personal letters, hymns, and prayers. In the discovered clay tablet libraries, there are also multiple copies of the same text, as the scribes repeatedly copied them during their training. The earliest known cuneiform text is a poem, the Epic of Gilgamesh. The story was written on several clay tablets and was found in the ruins of the city of Uruk. Among the thousands of cuneiform tablets discovered, there is one surviving document called the Sumerian King List. The kings are recorded there, as eight of them, according to the Sumerian texts, reigned before the Great Flood. It is in these Sumerian texts that the story of the Great Flood, which precedes the biblical story of Noah's Ark, first appears. In later centuries, King Urnamu published a code of laws that is believed to be the earliest discovered in Mesopotamia. According to experts, the writing of the Sumerians arose in the 4th millennium BC and spread throughout Mesopotamia. As a result, the first schools were developed where boys learned to read and write. The Sumerians had a highly developed agriculture. This is evidenced by the irrigation facilities they built to irrigate their cultivated areas. These complex canal systems, in turn, are a testament to the fine engineering achievements of this ancient civilization. The crops grown by them are diverse, according to studies. There was an abundance of cereals in their territories. The Sumerians are believed to have been one of the first societies to brew different types of beer, for example, from wheat and barley. The Epic of Gilgamesh text mentions the drinking of beer, which suggests to researchers that its production was probably very important to the Sumerians. Again referring to the Epic of Gilgamesh, scholars point out that the Sumerians had a highly developed trade. This is also evidenced by the objects and materials found during archaeological research which are not typical for the territory of Sumer. The mathematical knowledge of the Sumerian civilization is impressive. Research indicates that they were engaged in geometry and arithmetic. Clay tablets have been discovered, which scientists believe are multiplication tables. The Sumerians are also credited with the timekeeping system that we still use today, namely that there are 60 seconds in a minute and 60 minutes in an hour. For the first time, they structured time into two 12-hour periods, defining day and night, which form the 24-hour cycle of the day. According to historians, this ancient civilization had an enviable knowledge of astronomy. They observed and mapped the stars, and were even familiar with five of the planets in the solar system. The art left by the Sumerians continues to impress historians and researchers to this day. We see examples where the sculptures have clean and simplified forms, such as a group of statues from the Temple of Abu at Tel Azmar. They are sculpted from a whole block, and the later sculptures are modeled from soft materials or assembled from different types of materials. As a result, the sculpture becomes realistic and more detailed. Various ornaments and inlays with semi-precious stones, probably brought from other countries, are present. 
cylindrical seals are characteristic of Sumerian art. They were made of clay or stone and served to seal jars and vessels used to store food. Despite the administrative function of these reliefs, they told stories from which archaeologists today draw information about the Sumerian culture. Over time, the situation in Sumeria underwent changes. Gradually, the rulers of the city-states began attempts to subjugate the neighboring city-states in order to seize territories. However, this led to the decline of the Sumerian culture. In Mesopotamia, raids by nomadic Semitic tribes such as the Akkadians also began. So around 2334 BC, King Sargon of Akkad, who united all of Mesopotamia under his rule and created the world's first empire, conquered Sumer. However, it is not by chance that the Sumerian civilization is considered the founder of the modern world. Their contribution is undeniable in the development of the first urban societies, trade, writing, and engineering. We can safely say that the Sumerians laid the track for the modern world we live in. So many years after this foundation was laid, we are still moving along the line drawn by the ancient Sumerians thousands of years ago. In our so-called modern society, Will we witness another such civilization setting the tone for such a great evolutionary leap in our development? Share your opinion on the matter. Ancient Egypt The eternal subject that captivates the minds of scholars and researchers. A culture that has been the subject of much archaeological research and study. A popular subject among both specialists and the general public. Despite this, however, it still seems mystical, shrouded in conundrums and wonders. Egyptian religion and beliefs, the deification of animals, the understanding of life and death contribute to this mystery. The images of Egyptian gods are so widespread that even if we don't know the name of the particular deity, as soon as it is depicted with the head of an animal and a human body, we immediately recognize it as Egyptian. Where did the Egyptians' cult of animals come from? According to specialists, the Egyptian religion cannot be considered as a separate entity. It must be seen against the backdrop of the non-religious activities and values of the people. The beliefs of the ancient Egyptians were related to nature in one general system. As for animals, because of their contribution to everyday life, people saw them as the manifestation of the gods. Because of their strength, agility, speed, and beauty, the Egyptians began to deify cats, bulls, crocodiles, and others. Thus, the images of deified animals are present everywhere around them, in their daily life, in their religious rituals, and even in wars. The cult of animals is so strongly embedded in the Egyptian religion that the Egyptians built necropolises for the sacred animals in which they placed their mummified remains. Individual tribes built temples and altars for their deities, embodied in the image of a particular animal. The most important figure in any group or tribe performed the functions of a priest. In his work, the specialist in ancient history, Francisco José Gómez, notes Pharaoh Menes as the first pharaoh to unite the lands of Upper and Lower Egypt, and thus become the sole high priest of all Egyptian deities. The cult of animals continued until the end of ancient Egyptian history, but at a later stage, the so-called anthropomorphic gods appeared. The animal head is retained as an attribute, but the deity is now depicted with a human body. Egyptian religion combines multiple versions of the origin of the world. Different priests form different theories, which they even change according to momentary needs. Although their religion is polytheistic, it recognizes that there is one supreme God, and the various deities worshipped are manifestations of Him. The number of gods was great. New deities appeared, and old ones ceased to be worshipped. According to the era, or the ruling dynasty, some gods are united or displaced by others. Amun. Egyptologists define him as the mysterious god. He is most often depicted in human form with the symbols of power, a scepter and a crown. Ra, the sun god. He is believed to be the creator of all living things on earth and in heaven. During the new kingdom, these two deities were united into one, god Amun-Ra. 
During the reign of Akhenaten, the god Aten was declared the god of the sun disk and the supreme deity. Horus, depicted as a falcon, the god Horus was the god of the sky and the divine symbol of the king. Ptah, god of creation, creator of the world, he is the patron of craftsmen. Osiris, king of the underworld, god of rebirth. Isis, goddess of creation, raising the dead. She is the wife of Osiris and the mother of Horus. Apis, the sacred bull, god of fertility. Anubis, god of the dead, patron of burials, mummification, and necropolises. He is depicted as a jackal. Bastet, the cat goddess, who is the patroness of pregnant women. Bess, household god, guardian against evil forces. His image resembled a gnome. Kanur, god with a ram's head. A potter god who is believed to have created life on a potter's wheel. Nekbet, vulture goddess, guardian of Upper Egypt. Wadget, cobra goddess and patroness of Lower Egypt. Nut, goddess of the sky believed by the Egyptians to swallow the sun in the evening and give birth again in the morning. Sakmet, goddess of war. She is depicted with the head of a lioness. Sobek, the crocodile god, lord of the waters. Toth, depicted as a man with the head of an ibis. He is the god of knowledge and writing. Set, god of lightning. Celtic, scorpion goddess, patroness of women and childbirth. Hathor, daughter of Ra and great mother goddess. She is depicted as a cow. Kepri, scarab god, a symbol of rebirth. The Egyptians also worshipped several deities, guardians of the organs of the dead. Duamutef, guardian of the stomach, depicted with a jackal's head. Imseti, guardian of the liver, depicted as a mummified man. Kebesinuef, guardian of the bowels, depicted with a hawk's head. Hapi, guardian of the lungs, depicted with the head of a baboon. Death had a special meaning for the Egyptians. According to their religion, earthly life is only a path to the eternal life in the afterlife. It was for this reason that they attached so much importance to funeral rites. It was extremely important for the Egyptians to prepare for life after death. For this, they prepared their tombs with great care in order to preserve their bodies, they were mummified. In the process of mummification, the brain was taken out with a hook through the nose, and the other organs were stored in vessels called canopies. The lid of each vessel depicted the respective deity, guardian of the organ. A legend details the transition of the deceased to the afterlife. Before passing on to eternity, he must face the court of souls, presided over by Osiris. There, the deceased must swear that he had committed no sins. This is proven by comparing the weight of his heart to a feather. According to belief, the heart contains all the sins of a person. If it is heavier than a feather, they throw the condemned into boiling water or into the mouth of a beast. If, however, he proves innocent, he passes into the realm inhabited by the souls of the righteous. In archaeological investigations of Egyptian tombs, Researchers have found texts and drawings on sarcophagi or on papyrus rolls of so-called incantations. These texts, inscribed on tomb walls, sarcophagi, and stelae, are collected in the Book of the Dead. Perhaps the book is accepted as sacred, secret knowledge. Studying the scriptures, the interpretations of scholars are divided in several directions. According to some, it describes the funeral ritual or the path of the dead to the afterlife. According to another theory, the collected spells give guidance to the dead on how to deal with difficulties or how to achieve what they desired in the next life. You can learn more about Al Azif, Howl of the Midnight Demons, or also called the Book of the Dead, in our video, The Most Dangerous Books in the World. According to the beliefs of the Egyptians, the Pharaoh is the king of the world the only priest and living God. In literal translation, the word Pharaoh means big house or royal palace. The Pharaoh is the master of the universe and the personification of all of Egypt. He is a mediator between the world of the gods and the world of men. 
He is believed to be a direct son of Ra, and as such, his death is seen as an ascension to the other gods. One of the main duties of the Pharaoh is to maintain cosmic order. Strictly defined rituals and ceremonies accompany his entire earthly life. Thanks to them, the Pharaoh manages to repel chaos and maintain balance in the universe. Egyptologists share that this is precisely the foundation on which the religion of the ancient Egyptians was built. The belief that thanks to the cult and rituals, the universal order is maintained. The basis of religious activity is the constant repetition, not the development, of rituals and ceremonies. For this reason, the building of temples is of utmost importance to the people. These incredible architectural achievements, such as the Egyptian pyramids and temples, still intrigue lovers of Egyptian culture to this day. However, researchers distinguish two types of temples. The first is the huge majestic pyramids, which are supposed to represent the royal tombs, the funerary temple of the Pharaoh. However, this thesis is still the subject of great debate. Researchers are divided on whether the pyramids were intended to be part of a funerary ritual or were built for an entirely different purpose. The other type is the temples of the deities, where the glory of a particular deity is celebrated, shrines that inspire awe in the faithful. They are not isolated buildings, but part of large complexes that also include workshops, warehouses, libraries, housing for the priests, and more. As we have already said, the Pharaoh is the only high priest, but he is assisted by numerous priests who form an influential and privileged caste. Priests performed complex and important functions in the temple in which they served. They had the right to marry, have children, and own land, but they also had strictly defined requirements for their appearance, clothing, and lifestyle. They had to be literate, and their behavior served as an example for society. An important aspect of Egyptian religion and daily life was magic and divination, which again served to maintain universal order According to their beliefs, through divination they reveal the unfavorable future, and with the help of magic, which had a positive character, they tried to counteract misfortune. Magic is also part of their religious cult, and some priests use it. Magic was also practiced for healing purposes, to cure diseases. Divination, in turn, was considered sacred. Egyptians saw it as a way for the gods to communicate with people. Some of the methods of divination include the interpretation of dreams and divination by water. Thanks to the archaeological studies of Egyptian culture and art, we have the opportunity to touch the culture and religion of ancient Egypt. The walls of the Egyptian pyramids and temples are filled with texts, with many spells, hieroglyphs, reliefs, and drawings, telling stories, giving guidance, and scenes depicting gods and pharaohs all of them deeply connected with the beliefs of the ancient Egyptians. Interestingly, the more we learn about ancient Egypt, the more questions seem to multiply. Hopefully, as technology advances and new discoveries are made, we will begin to get answers to some of the existential questions that have plagued those interested in the subject for decades. Tell us the topics related to Egypt that you would like us to present to you. More similar videos you can find in our channel. Support us by sharing this video and subscribing to the channel.